Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, so we're going to talk about the father call that Chris Chan took a part of. Now, this call was basically between Casey, one of Chris's many, many, many troll girlfriends, and her father, who I'm assuming was played by a troll. I was, I think it was the same troll that played uh, Liquid Chris. Um, I, cause I think I heard that somewhere, but I don't know. Um, and I don't think it's ever been really said either, but I did hear rumors it was Liquid Chris who did it. Um, so we're gonna talk about the call. Um, there's, there's like a big summary and video. Um, I'm only gonna go over the summary. And if you wanna look at the transcript, you're more than welcome to. Um, it's on the quickie where you can see it for yourself. Um, but I'm just gonna focus on the summary here and here. All right, so anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. The father call is a phone call that occurred on the 4th of November in 2009. In this call, Solid Chris spends two hours on the phone with Matthew DeVoria, father of his would-be sweetheart, Casey, and a retired U.S. Marine who served in the Gulf War. Chris uses the opportunity of speaking to the dad of his sweetheart by boasting of, of his now, now legendary honesty before flimsily attempting to defend himself from an angry father. The, their conversation is illuminating. What follows is probably the most blunt personal assessment Chris has ever received to date. Matt berates Chris for his laziness, egotism, lack of empathy, inability to grow up, unhealthy lifestyle, obesity, treatment of Casey, and general failure at life. To this day, Chris has never taken any of Matt and Casey's advice to heart, like he never takes anyone's advice. Throughout the call, he retorts by saying that he leads a hard life, um, which includes such laborious tasks as doing menial chores, mowing the lawn, and cleaning the house, which he does a shit job at. I might add. He also claims to be strong and that he exercises regularly as well as eating healthy by going to McDonald's only once per week and shoving vegetables down his throat. After being berated with insults for two hours or so, he says Chris become, became increasingly more stressed, frequently making insensitive comments toward statements towards Matthew. In general, Chris greatly offended Casey and her father, causing her to rethink their, her relationship and go back to live with Chris. Chris recorded his November 5th video as a follow-up to this conversation, hoping to repair his relationship with Casey. He then had another phone conversation with Casey, which, to put it bluntly, ended equally as poorly. And this is, an, is Chris's rendition of the father, because Chris made Casey a comic. It's like a few-page comic, basically about Chris saving her from liquid. And... Yeah, that's his depiction of her, which is of his dad, of Casey's dad, which is a very stereotypical army guy, the buzz, the shit buzz cut, the sunglasses, and the army uniform. Okay, so here's the summary of the call. Throughout the call, portal is occasionally heard in the background, as well as constant typing sounds every so often. A turn from the video game can briefly be heard at approximately one hour and twenty minutes in. You know, I remember listening to a lot, a good majority of this call. Um, when I was uh, listening to Gino Samuel's video on the subject, and I didn't hear this. Maybe he edited it out, I don't know, but I never really heard any sound effects. Chris sighs constantly during the call to, to a point where Matthew points out the constant sighing three times. Yeah, yeah, he does that a lot. It's, it's really annoying. The call begins with Chris taking, talking to Casey and making some rather dubious sounding claims about his weightlifting prowess, saying he just got done lifting 50 pounds 51 times with each arm, Oh, that's the video where he's lifting the cans of can with the boxes of canned lemonade. Wrong, poorly, I might add. For a total of 102 reps, according to Chris, Casey doesn't bother to question Chris on the truth of these claims and instead hands the phone over to Matthew. Before she hands the phone over, however, Casey claims she has to lift at least 100 pounds for her job. Chris does not question how or why a waitress would have to lift that many pounds. Matt starts out being fairly civil towards Chris, though it, 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 it's immediately obvious he doesn't have much respect for him. Matt begins by calling out Chris for his underwhelming employment record and tells him that no sane employer would be would take his claim of being a Pokemon gym leader slash producer seriously. Upon being questioned as to the source of his monthly income, Chris reveals his autism and, it, and the corresponding monthly tugboat. I'm autistic. I don't get paid for being autistic. That would, that'd be nice. Matt asks if any hypothetical children or tarred babies, as he says, of Chris and Casey would also be autistic. And while Chris denies that they would be, Matt checks with Casey, who confirms that autism is more often than not genetic. This is the first of several times Chris lies during the call, and while Matt goes easy on him, this time he won't be so generous the next time Chris does it. Chris reveals his dream about God promising him a daughter named Crystal. Not only does Matt 
consider the idea of God sending Chris messages to be blasphemous. He doesn't even like Crystal as a name and believes it's more appropriate for a stripper or an expensive brand of champagne. Chris corrects him with the pronunciation of the name to not sound like a stripper. Crystal, uh, Crystal, not Crystal. He also misspells the name. Chris ignores the fact that Casey does not like the name that much either, as Matthew points out. He did do that. After indirectly confirming to Matthew that he, that he was interested primarily in Casey for her looks, he, he is questioned on why the great and powerful Liquid was impersonating him. Saul's response to the claims that Liquid was jealous of his success with Sonichu, Matt is at first completely bewildered as to why Chris is spending so much time on Sonichu before using it to make the point that Chris has completely failed to move on from his teenage years. The tone of the conversation takes a significant turn for the worse, and Matt brings out the subject of twin falling towers. Oh, no and says that he found that said video to be especially offensive since his mother, Casey's grandmother, was one of the casualties of the World Trade Center on the 9-11. Chris's only response was to blame it all on Clyde Cash because he was being mean to Chris. Matthew is unsurprisingly baffled as to why Chris tried getting back at a random guy on the internet by mockingly comparing him to the subject of one of the all-time biggest American tragedies. Chris tries to elicit sympathy by claiming to have undergone warlike tribulations in his life. Uh, This is going to be good. Matt tells Chris what war is actually like, recounting his Gulf War experiences, particularly an incident where he had to carry a dead colleague back to base. Chris retracts his statement about his problems being warlike, but carries on whining about the hard burdens he had that he's had to deal with, like pulling weeds, playing guitar a fail. Oh, he's playing guitar hero. Okay. Mowing the lawn, moving furniture, and burying his beloved dog. Matt is even more offended by the insinuation that is equal to the death of his mother and even points out that his grandmother with arthritis pulled weeds. Chris also seems to believe a doghouse made of plastic and wood weighs 5 to 10 tons, 1,000 to 10,000 to 20,000 pounds, and believes the doghouse would weigh more than any tombstone, which tend to weigh an average of about 80 pounds. Trying to gain sympathy by saying Patty's doghouse was essentially a tombstone, Chris believes plastic and wood would weigh more than solid stone. Rejecting the previous claim to saying the doghouse weighed 100 pounds, a small dog like Patty would not need a doghouse that heavy nor large. Chris isn't discouraged by the fact that his attempts to earn sympathy aren't working and rants semi-coherently about how evil the trolls have made his life a misery. That's not how that should go, but okay. Not only does this self-pitying whine, whining severely annoy Matt, Chris unwittingly digs himself into a deeper hole by revealing details about the Ohio trip in the Julie saga, causing Matthew to angrily question him on why he wouldn't come to D.C. to meet Casey if he were willing to drive 800 miles to another state to rescue a girlfriend he eventually found out didn't exist. Matt accuses Chris of acting like a child and mentions the state of his room as proof that he's lazy and unwilling to take responsibility, remarking Chris's plan to be a household husband. Chris just tries to blame Barb for not helping him. Chris tries to just try to blame Barb for not helping him, but critically saying Barb is lazy. Matt sarcastically comments on his lack of maturity, but Chris misses the sarcasm and thinks he's actually agreeing with him. It is unbelievably insensitive, in an unbelievably insensitive move, even by his standards, Chris compares the effort of tidying his house with that, oh, sorry, I I messed that up. Let me start again. In an unbelievably insensitive move, even by his standards, Chris compares the effort of that tidying his house would entail with the effort Matt spent carrying his dead colleague back to base. Matt is rightfully furious at this comparison and gets Casey back on the phone to tell her how full shit Chris is. Casey tells Chris he he needs to respect Matthew more before handing the phone back to her father. Chris tries to say he was being respectful and Matthew treats him like a child. Casey points out he needs to be nicer and more respectful to Matthew, not to mention throughout the call Chris is acting like a child, which Matt does not overlook. After being yelled at by Casey, Chris apologizes to Matthew with Matthew seeing past his crap. An offhand remark about the library leads Matt to question on Chris's le- Chris on his reading habits. Chris said that the last book he read was To Kill a Mockingbird. Matt points out that a book general that's a book generally read, read by high school students. I don't think I've ever actually read that book. And then asks him what he's learned from the novel. Chris proceeds to describe the plot of, of, of Mice and Men. Upon ha- having this pointed out, Chris remembers the, which book he's talking about and gives a vaguely correct description of the plot, but seems to have only read or paid attention to the first half of the story. When Matt brings up the court case, a major part of the story, and the character of Atticus Finch, who is the main character's dad, Chris seems to not know what he's talking about. Matt says that Casey reads books like Chris stuffs candy down his throat. Chris completely misses the point of the comparison and angrily claims that he has a healthy lifestyle. 
Matthew thoroughly mocks Chris's lack of basic, basic comprehension skills and challenges him to produce a video of himself exercising in order to prove his obviously fit false claims of being healthy. Returning to the subject of Crystal, Matthew asks Chris how he intends to support himself, Casey, and a child on his tugboat and a minimum wage job. Chris tries to claim that eight hours of eight dollars an hour is plenty for a family of three, to which Matt points out is that not only is the amount of money nowhere near enough, that minimum wage is actually the minimum wage is actually seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. Chris takes a sneering tone during the debate, only the ser- only serving to piss Matt off even more, causing Casey to again tell Chris to respect Matthew. But at this point, Casey's getting pissed off with Chris's disrespect and clear failure to listen to her and her father's advice. Matthew again questions Chris on his lifestyle and asks him to take his pulse. Chris discovers his pulse to be 84 beats per minute. Casey overhears this and tells Chris that with his history of heart trouble and unhealthy eating, such a pulse indicates a serious problem. Chris doesn't seem at all bothered by him possibly risking death, which really annoys Casey and causes her to storm off. Chris bizarrely attempts to make himself look better by boasting that he's American born and bred and has never actually even left the country, somehow thinking this will impress the man who fought in Iraq. Matt points out that not only is this irrelevant since Casey and Liquid Chris are also American, true patriots wouldn't make videos mocking national tragedies. Matt decides to test Chris's memory and asks him various details about Casey. Chris gets her favorite color vaguely right and has no idea what her favorite flower is and takes forever to remember which of her family members died in 9-11, which should have been easy for Chris because Matt told him earlier in the conversation. Matt tells Chris that he must be naive to think that he would have any chance with Casey. Chris gets really annoyed by Matthew's usage of the dreaded N-word and actually implies that he would try to kick Matthew's ass were they in the same room, at least until Matthew reminds him which of the two is a former, was formerly in the USMC, causing Chris to quickly backtrack on his threats. Out of nowhere, Chris suddenly brings up his experience by being restrained his, by his elementary school teachers, principal and teachers. This is probably yet another attempt to gain sympathy. But Matthew just considers it more evidence that Chris has serious problems and points out how hypocritical it is for him to accuse Liquid of being the crazy one. Matt brings up Casey, Chris's first meeting with Casey and her sister and accuses him of acting in an inappropriate, touchy-feely manner, which Chris flat out denies being true. This leads to Matthew, to Matthew questioning Chris on where he would take Casey on a date and in turn, how much he would tip the server. Chris responds, indicates that he believes in the 15% rule to be the cast iron rule rather than just a rough guideline for tipping. Chris abruptly tries weaseling his way out of the call, partly because of how late at night it is, but also because he thinks Matthew's being disrespectful to him. After some back and forth regarding Casey, the future of Chris's relationship with her, her song dedication video and Chris's version, own version of the song, Matthew snidely congratulates Chris on getting Casey and Liquid back together. Casey comes back one last time and rails at Chris for being disrespectful and generally full of shit as Matthew attempts to hold back laughter. He, he, he really tries to hold, stop, not laugh. He mentions Chris failing to make her a comic, presumably what would become the gun comic, and instead of making her a little big planet level, Casey reveals to Chris that reveals that Chris asked her for her phone number, which she refused to give him until her parents trusted him. Chris claims he would have come to her if he knew where she was, despite earlier in the call implying after Julie, he would not travel to see any girlfriends. During this, she compares him to Liquid, who says she would have driven to see her as soon as he knew she was upset. Chris didn't bother during the call to ask how she was when talking to Matthew. Chris doesn't give a clear answer to any of her accusations, resulting in her storming out of the call for good. The tape runs out before the call actually ends, but it's clear by now that Chris has fucked up big time. So here there's a video of the call. It's probably, it's available on YouTube, apparently. So um, you can watch that if you want. And these, this all is basically the transcript of the call. So if you want to see exactly how it played out, you can. I'm not going to read all this because it looks, it's fucking long as hell. Um, so that was the father call. Really just gives a, I know this is all a troll call, but like none of this was real. Like Chris like, had never was going to have a chance with Casey, but he believed he did. And that's the problem. He didn't know this; these were trolls. So he, this is how he was genuinely acting. And this might have been how he would genuinely act with a real girlfriend, which as we've seen with Jessica Quinn, he did. So that's the father call. It's a very interesting piece of Christory. Um, 
So that's it. If you like this video, be sure to like the video, comment on it, subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to reach a thousand by either this month or this year, whichever comes first. Um, share the video with a friend and watch my other videos because I have a lot of other videos talking about Chris and other subjects and games and all that stuff. So um, I will see you all next time and be sure to stay beautiful because I most certainly will not be doing that for you.